He works all things together for good. Yeah. And then they love Him. Hallelujah. <laughs> Ask Brother Billy and Brother Reese to tag team tonight and come preach to us. We want Brother Billy to come and obey the Lord. Let's see what God has for us. Well, I thank the Lord for all He's done for me. Uh, I want to thank Brother Keen for the opportunity to get up here. I you know I say that every time I get up and preach, but I want to make sure that I thank him because this is his podium, this is his desk, and uh, I just want to make sure and thank him for the opportunity to get behind it. You can go ahead and start uh, turning to uh, the book of Matthew, chapter number 4. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and read this chapter, or this verse here while y'all are turning there. It says, There hath no temptation taken you but such as is common to man, but God faith is faithful, who will not suffer you to be tempted above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape, that ye may be able to bear it. Amen. And I don't know about y'all, but when I read that, I've heard so many people quote, you know, that Brother Reese, that God's not going to give you any temptation that you can't handle. Yeah. But they leave that latter part of that verse out that talks about how that God will be there with you and you can bear it. Yeah. You'll have a way of escape to bear the temptation. You know, so many times, Brother Reese, I don't know about you, but as a, as a human being, when I come up against a problem or something that's tempting me, I, I try to do it my own, Brother brother Jeff. I try to, to kind of go through it, Brother Gene, and kind of work through it on my own and, and just pray about it by myself and, and take care of it in, inside. But there I had y'all turn to Matthew chapter number 4. And this is where I want to really preach from here tonight. And it says, Then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afraid or afterward and hungered. Yeah. And when the tempter came to him, he said, If thou be the Son of God, command these stones to be made bread. But he answered and said, It is written. Amen. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Amen. Then the devil taken him up into a, the holy city and set him on a pinnacle of the temple. And said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee, and in their hands they shall bear thee up, lest at any time thou didst dashest thy foot against the stone. Jesus said unto him, It is written again, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. And again the devil taken him up into exceeding high mountain, and showed him the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them, and said unto him, all these things will I give if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Then Jesus said, then said Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil left him, and behold, angels came and ministered unto him. And as, as I begin to get ready, I've been thinking about this, Brother Dean, for about a week or so now. Uh, I, I talked to some young men the other day uh, along this line. We, we did a little Bible study, and this is kind of what I talked to them about. And we were talking about why we wanted to do the Bible study, Brother Dean. We kind of went over the, the outlines of what we were going to do. But I began to think about how important, Brother Reese, it is that we dig into the Word of God. Amen. And we know the Word of God. Because, you know, it's so easy to come to church, Brother Brother Dean, and let somebody else tell me what the Word of God says. Yeah. It's so easy to come in and sit through Sunday morning, Sunday night service, yeah. Wednesday night service, and just begin to be told, Brother Jeff, how that I should live my life. And, and then I can just be one of those Christians that go from service to service yeah. and just get a little bit of what God might have wanted for me to know about Brother. the Word of God. Yeah. But the Bible tells us to study to show thyself approved, a, a workman that needeth not to be ashamed, yeah. rightly dividing the Word of truth, 
It's not talking about just getting into a little bit of it, but we need to get in. We need to dig in, brother Gant. And we need to get a hold of what the Word of God says. Because we see the temptator, the tempter come to Jesus here and he began to tempt him. He said, if thou be the Son of God, you know, Brother Reese, I see that Jesus was tempted with this more than just here in the wilderness. Yeah. Even hanging on the cross, if thou be the Son of God. So this ain't the, the last time we'll be tempted this. But he began to come back with him with the Word of God. Yeah. He said, it is written... And he began to quote from Deuteronomy uh, and say, hey, it's written over here. You know, we, we got the whole Bible. We got Old Testament, New Testament. Yeah. But they just had portions of it back then, yeah. brother, brother Reese. Some of it hadn't even been written yet. Yeah. But he began to say, it is, it is written here uh, that, that you're not supposed to live off just bread. You know, and, and here he tempts him to, to feed his flesh. Yeah. To get in there and, and feed himself, you know, it'd be a great miracle, Brother Dean, for somebody to turn a few stones into some bread and eat and, and be filled up. But but Jesus didn't want to do that. Right. You know, there was food in the city, and, and he'd been being fed from the Father anyways those 40 days. Thank you, Jesus. But the devil began to attack his flesh and said, well, if you, you'll, you'll be filled. But he wanted to quote scripture. And then we can look later on, and the devil quotes scripture at him. Brother Reese, isn't that just like the devil? Just like him. The devil come at you and he'll quote you a little bit of scripture, just a little bit of the truth, and with his lie to tell you, well, it's not so bad. Yeah. And he begins to point it at you, point the finger at you. Oh, you know, he said he'll he'll protect you yeah. if you do this. Yeah. Oh, but is that what it said? You know, I, I can remember a, a, a woman in the garden. He was tempted of the devil. Yeah. And she was told a little bit of truth in with a lie too. And she yeah. fell. Yeah. But there's a way of escape. You can, you can read through the Word of God and you can get the answer for yourself. You don't have to just fall for the lies of the enemy, but you can actually know what the Word of God said. You can yeah. study it for yourself. Yeah. You can get it out for yourself. You don't have to rely on somebody else. Yeah. But you yeah. can get the truth for yourself. You can fight with it. You know, I, <laughs> I went over the... the, the, the the armor of God, and one of them is the the sword of the Spirit. Amen. And they said there was a little slash in there that said Word of God. Yeah. You know when we, when a soldier goes into a battle, he don't leave his weapon back behind, brother Gene. He takes it with him. But he's got to know that weapon. He's got to prove that weapon, brother Reese. I'm sure there was multiple times that before you ever went across and, and was handed a gun that you fired that weapon. You practiced with that weapon. You knew it inside and out. They probably took it apart multiple times. You had to clean it and had to to take care of it. We gotta get in the word of God as a soldier. We gotta know this word of God like the back of our hand. You know, we we, we gotta be in this. You know, I was talking to somebody that, that young man Nick is his name that I work with, and he was telling me ever since he cut his neck, he's just been a little more interested in serving God. He, he almost died. He cut his carotid artery, the, the chainsaw came out and, and came across the neck, and he almost died. But we begin to talk about how that you know before he was just Christian by name and, and he's told people he was a Christian. But how many times are we church members uh, just Christians by name? We show up, Brother Gina, to the house of God and then we go through the motions, but we don't get in our Bible, we don't get closer to God, we don't draw closer to God. Oh, but we but we're Christians. Come on now. We're we're the three three services a week Christian. We just show up to be Faithful to the house of God. Yeah. Yeah. Because that's what we were taught. Oh, but there's much more than just showing up to church. Amen. we, we got to know the Word so we can fight off the tempter. Uh, so we don't just sit there because of, uh, Jesus fought him uh, yeah. with the Word of God. Uh, yeah. And if Jesus needed the, the Word of God to, to fight off the devil, Sister Danette, I think I probably need it just as much, if not more. Because I know I can't stand on my own two feet when it comes to the devil. If I begin to argue with him, he knows a lot more than I do. He's been here since the beginning, Brother Jeff. He's been working on this earth. He knows how to tempt. He knows how to work on people. But I don't know how he thinks. But he knows how I think. 
He's already been here so long. He knows how to tempt us and get us, Brother Reese. Amen. He knows how to get in our thoughts. Yeah. He knows how to get in our jobs. Yeah. He knows how to use other people around us to tempt us and tell us that, that we're not doing right or, or this isn't right or that isn't right. Or he, they can get in our head. Yeah. Oh, but if we know the Word, if we know what it says, and we're doing our best to live what it says, oh, we can fight back with this sword. We can fight back with our weapon because the war is not be between me and Brother Gene. It's not between me and Brother Reese. Uh, but it's between the spiritual realm, uh, between the enemy of this world, uh, not the people in it, but the, the enemy that, that works it, Brother Jeff. Yeah. And between, the, between that and the Lord, I'm just here to go along with it. I want to be a good soldier uh, that is faithful uh, to know my weapon, uh, to be able to fight against the enemy, brother, uh, because I have fallen a lot. I, I talked to somebody the other day, and they asked me why, why I try to, to fight everything that comes my way with the Bible and give them a Bible verse for everything when we come up to a tough situation. And I said, because so many years, brother Jeff, I lived the way I wanted to, I was a sinner lost, and I was serving the enemy. And I didn't need to know the Bible, Brother Jeff. I was serving him and doing my whole heart for that. For the reason I want to be just as wholehearted about knowing my word of God and knowing how to fight this fight and know how to stand up against the wild ends of the devil because I know that it's me and God in this fight. Yeah, man. But I've got to know the word so it don't get twisted. Brother Reese, if you'll start making your way over here. we got to know that we know that we know. Amen. Because if we don't, the devil get in our mind. Begin to twist it. The Bible talks about men twisting the scriptures to their own demise. If we don't know what it really says, and we don't trust in the Lord, it will cause us to fall. Amen. 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 Okay. Well, somebody worship the Lord. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, what Brother Billy was talking about was a, a weapon, and I want to talk to you about secret weapon number one. Amen. You see, when Jesus was out there and he was in the wilderness, it looked like the devil had him backed into a corner. It looked like the devil had him bound. It looked like yeah. you know, the devil had him at the brink of just falling over and giving up. Amen. Yeah. But Jesus was nowhere near it. Amen. Because one yeah. of the curious things about that story is before Jesus went off into the wilderness for 40 yeah. days and 40 nights, he was down at the Jordan River yeah. and he said, I'm going to be baptized. Amen. Right. And when he was baptized, he come up out of the water and you can see a perfect picture of the Trinity. And the Bible says that the Holy Ghost descended from heaven as yeah. a dove and it yeah. landed right on Jesus Christ. Amen. The weapon of not carnal, amen. We've got the Word of God, but not only that, we've got the Holy Ghost living yeah. inside yeah. of us. Yeah. The Holy Ghost is secret weapon number one. Praise the Lord. He said in Luke the 4, 18 and 19, the Spirit of the Lord is upon me. Yeah. He wasn't saying that yeah. figuratively. He yeah. was saying that literally the Spirit of the Lord is upon me yeah. because He has anointed me to preach the gospel. Praise God. Poor. He has sent me to heal up the brokenhearted, to preach
You say, I don't know enough about the Word of God. Well, why don't you get the Holy Ghost and open up the yeah. Bible, amen? Yeah. 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 He's your secret weapon to learning the Word of God. Yeah. The Bible says He shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance whatsoever I have said unto yeah. you. You say, well, Brother Reese, I don't know which way to go. Well, He's your secret weapon for that too because He can give you guidance. John 16 and 13 says, how be it when He, the Spirit of truth, is come, He will guide you into all truth. Yeah. He shall not speak of Himself, but whatsoever He shall hear, He shall speak, and He shall show you things to come. What about that time when you feel like you need help, when you feel like you need comfort, but there's nobody to talk to, and there's nobody that understands? The Holy Ghost is your secret. Yeah. Yeah. For the Word of God says in John 14, 16, and 17, I will pray the Father and He shall give you another comforter. That word comforter is capitalized. That means it's talking about a specific person and it is talking about the Holy Ghost. Amen. He may abide with you forever even the Spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth Him not nor knoweth Him but ye know Him for He dwelleth in you and shall be in you. Amen. Somebody needs to pull out their secret weapon. Yeah. You don't have to look for it. You don't have to find it. The Bible says it's already in you. Yeah. Yeah. You say, well, Brother Reese, I feel like I'm powerless. Acts 1 and 8, Jesus said, but ye shall receive power. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem, in all Judea, and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost parts of the world. We're far away from those places, so we're in the uttermost parts of the world. So we need to be witnesses, and we need more power than we've ever needed before. Amen. Right. Not only that, convicted. Most people look at this verse here and say, well, why do I need the secret power of convicting so I can talk to sinners? I see church people that need to be convicted of things just as much as sinners do. Yeah. The Bible yeah. says in John 16 and 8, and when He is come, He shall reprove the world of sin and of righteousness and of judgment. Amen. Yeah. Maybe you need to let the Holy Ghost come into your life and convict you of some things. Maybe you've gotten off the path a little bit and you need to pull out the secret weapon and just use it on yourself and say, Lord, is there anything that I need to put away out of my life? And not only that, He's the liberator. If you feel like you're bound in your spirit or bound in your mind, or if you feel like you're bound right here in this church service, and you can't get a breakthrough, you can't worship God, you can't feel God, and you can't hear from God, He said, now the Lord is the Spirit, and where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. How many people believe that the Lord is here tonight? How many people yeah. believe that the Lord is here tonight? Yeah. Yeah. How many of you here believe that the Lord is here? Well, if you believe the Lord is here, then there's freedom. Then there's victory through yeah. Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Yeah. There's a man named Lee Strobel, and he was an investigative journalist, and he was a committed atheist. And Strobel, he forced and challenged this disproving Christianity. He said, I'm going to disprove it. I'm going to show everybody that there is no Jesus and that there's no power behind it. Well, he mind. got to studying and he got to interviewing and he got to talking to people. And you know what happened? The Word of God got in his heart. The facts got in his mind. It dripped down to his heart and he became a Christian. Amen. And not only did it not now, is he not only defending Christianity, He's debating for Christianity that there is a God, that Jesus Christ is real, and He can live inside of you today. Amen. Amen. You know what happened? Yeah. Somebody pulled out the secret weapon. The Holy Ghost got a hold of that man and started working on him. And maybe he's not been impossible, but I still believe today that the Holy Ghost is working through him. Yeah. And he's yeah. Good for him yeah. too. Yeah. Chuck Colson, he was a center figure in the Watergate scandal back in the 70s. He got thrown into prison for all the crimes, the presidential crimes that he had done, amen. And when he was thrown into prison, somebody gave him a Bible. He heard the preaching of God's Word. And even in the preaching of God's Word, in a jail cell, that man got saved. He became a Christian. He became delivered. And then God turned it around for him. And I'm here to tell you tonight by the Word of God and by the power of the Holy Ghost, that this secret weapon that I'm talking about is for you. If you don't have the Holy Ghost, if He's not speaking through you, if He's not speaking to you, if He's not worshiping Jesus through you, you need this secret weapon. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Just as Satan 
came to Jesus Christ. I wonder if Satan's been coming to somebody here tonight. Yeah. Sister Liz, could you come on to the piano? I'm just about finished. Oh. Satan has been coming to somebody tonight. Because when I see some folks, it just seems like something's missing. It seems like God wants to do so much more in your life. But I wonder to myself, what's the hold up? And I look at my life sometimes and I wonder what's the hold up? What is God wanting to do? I wonder if Satan has been causing fear and causing doubt and unbelief that's in your life and you're worried about tomorrow. And I know it's easy for me to say because most of the time in my life, it, it's just, a, it's wonderful, amen? There's a lot of times I don't face as many situations and hardships as some people do. But I'm here to tell you tonight that if I face the same hardships as you face, I would go to the same God that you can go yeah, to tonight yeah. and He would move for me just like He'll move for you here tonight. Amen. Amen. You've got to get the Word of God. You've got to get the Holy Ghost inside of you. I'm here to tell you tonight that the Holy Ghost wants to work for somebody in the house tonight. That He wants to work a miracle in your life tonight. Why don't we all stand in the house of God? The Holy Ghost, He can wake you up. The devil, he, He's like a, he's like a, a, a person that's coming up to the church. And grabbing, grabbing a little, a little um, bassinet and rocking it back and forth, back and forth, back and forth. And there's many times, even myself, I find myself I'm falling asleep. I'm getting caught up into the things of this world. But one person that can wake you up is the Holy Ghost. Amen. I wonder if somebody would pray at this altar tonight and say, Holy Ghost, I want you to wake me up. I wonder if there's somebody here tonight and the devil's been fighting you, the devil's been pushing you. Now the devil's been tempting you, telling you to go the other way. That you reach deep down inside and pull out that secret weapon and pull out the Word of God with the other hand and say, there's no way that I'm going to lose. Amen. Because there's no way that Jesus was going to lose. Greater is He that's in me than He that's of this world. Amen. If you're here tonight you need a word from the Lord, why don't you come down to this altar and say, Lord, I want you to speak to me. If you're here tonight, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Why don't you come down to this hall?